I'm back in the Benedict oh, School. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, can we lift it up? So your yeah. daughter's here with me? Yeah. She. Yeah.
Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, thumbs up if you can hear me. Thumbs up if you can hear me. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We are excited. We're ready. Amen. This is Monday Night Live, and this is class. This is your last class for the dynamics of man, your chapel service, and we're excited about that. Now, we have some uh, announcements we have to get out of the way first. We're going to go ahead and get those out of the way, and the first announcement that we have, you know, you have to put your first and your last name in the chat box. You have to put your first and your last name in the chat box. You have to do so by 6.30 in order to get credit for class. Although this is chapel, amen. Your class participation is also needed in chapel. So that's the first announcement. The second announcement is if you have not taken care of your tuition obligation, it is now the 17th of the month. So be sure to go over there and take care of your tuition obligation. Make sure you take care of your tuition obligation. And last but not least, amen. Chapel service is going to work like this. Your participation is needed. So here are three things that you're going to need to do. Number one, you're going to need to turn on your camera. Unless you are driving, you're at work, and you cannot turn on your camera. So we're going to need all cameras on unless you're driving or you are at work. That's the only reason for having cameras off. Amen. Glory to God. I see your message, Dr. Deidre Brown. Amen. I understand, and that's, that's perfectly okay. I thank you so much. Amen. Now. The next, the next announcement pertaining to chapel service is I'm going to need as much participation in the chat box as possible. So as your classmates are sharing the word of God with us, the word of God is written. So as they are sharing the word of God, we are going to need as much participation as possible. Excuse me for a second. Let's do it that way and we'll see if we can get some of that glare off of my face. All right. Yeah, you're going to need as much participation as possible. So make sure that you are commenting in the chat section about what they're ministering about, cheering them on, amening them on, making sure that you're supporting one another. And last but not least, last but not least, you're going to also need to make sure that you are taking good notes, because at the end of class, we're going to briefly discuss. We're going to pick a few people like we normally do, and we're going to briefly discuss what stood out, what was a blessing, what was good to us. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. Amen. And we're going to get started. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to get Dr. Bishop Henry Jarrett Sr. If you could open us up in prayer, sir. Amen. Glory to God. Did you get it? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Let's bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father God, for this section. We thank you, Father God, for this worship oh. service, Father. We pray, God, as each speaker go forth, we pray that you use them as they decrease and you increase. We pray, Father God, that we be edified and you be glorified. Bless and keep us strength through this whole process, Father, through this worship service, that we continue glorifying you. In Amen. I believe he said in Jesus' name, amen, at the end right there. He went on mute, but we caught his lips. Amen. Glory to God. All right. We're going to open up tonight, and tonight is going to be really, really good. The order is going to be Dr. Kimberly Judy. Then we're going to have Dr. Aron Bell, and we're going to have Dr. Freddie Roberts, Jr. That's going to share the word tonight. They're all going to have 10 to 12 minutes apiece. I want all speakers to be mindful of their time because you do have to share it with your classmates. And we're ready to receive the word of God. This is going to be really awesome. So we're going to open up with Dr. Kim Judy. You're going to start off, Dr. Kim Judy, and it is now your floor, madam. Praise the Lord, everybody. Ah, thank you, God. We are excited to be here and nervous at the same time. Amen. And But we thank God for it. Uh, Holy Spirit, I decrease right now so that you may increase. Uh, Holy Spirit, have your way. I in Jesus' name, amen for me. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to talk about identity crisis. And I'll be coming from the text in Genesis uh, chapter 1, 26 through 27. And the word of God reads as this. And God said, let us make man in our image 
after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, he created them. Amen, the word of God for the people of God. Today, I wanted to talk about the identity crisis that the body of Christ is experiencing. What I've come to understand is that even after knowing God, we do not know ourselves. The outward confusion of the world is a result of an identity crisis, and that happens because of ignorance. If we never learn about our identity, which is the spirit man, the soul man, and the flesh man, we will always operate out of purpose. And our purpose is tied to our identity. Not knowing who we are has caused great damage. He, and then we, if we look at the word of God, it says, so God created man in his own image. He didn't say he created us in the image of a cat or a dog, he said, I am creating them in my image and likeness. And not only that, he said, I am giving them rule over the earth. This is not a past tense statement. This is a present tense need. The world is in trouble and Moses is reminding us of whose we are and our purpose. We can no longer complain about the state of the world. We do not allow, if we do not allow the Holy Spirit to connect with our spirit man and our spirit man deliver the message to the soul man and the soul man um, connects with the flesh man and then the flesh man acts out the instructions class, the world needs us. The world needs us to know who we yeah. are. The world needs us to know who we are. When I when I looked at the text, I, I, it just boggled my mind how God breathed himself into us. So when I show up, I show up as him. Amen. I was looking at an article this week, and I don't know if you guys had heard about this, but in April of 2023, there was the Satanic Temple Presents satan con and they said it was a 10th year anniversary and it was the largest satanic conference ever to exist to happen in 2023 so where are the believers where are the spirit led people where are the people of god where are we are we somewhere hiding in in closets where are we if we say that we are believers where were the believers when they say that this was the largest gathering of satanic gathering known in history in 2023 when there is a church on every corner who are you do you know who you are? And the unfortunate thing that we have been tricked, we have been deceived to believe that we have been flesh, at least all my life, I thought that I had been flesh. But I have come to understand that in this class that I'm all spirit. And if I show up in the spirit, the Holy Spirit will direct me. Where were the believers when the unbelievers showed up in Boston at the Marriott? Was no one led? Did, no one, no believer was led to show up to counteract what they were doing. Who are you? Who are you? Do you know who you are? Even in this class, Satan doesn't care that we're in this class. Satan doesn't care that we go to church. He doesn't care that we can read the word. He doesn't care when you don't know who you are. He has tricked us by his lies. You know what they said? One of the individuals said, he said, well, we don't believe in Satan. We just come in because we come in together. So for women's right, we come in for freedom of speech. We're coming for freedom of religion. But you had a whole conference and it's, it was a large conference. Who, where are the believers? The ones that say that they believe. 
there was a man that jumped off of a parking deck last week and my girlfriend was in tears. She said, did I see him as the believer? Did I walk past him and not say anything? Did the Holy Spirit not speak to my spirit and say, say something to this man? Was I on the elevator with him when he got on the elevator and was going up to the parking deck to jump off of the parking deck? Where are the believers? Who are you? We show up so many times as the soul in our flesh and in our, in our mind and in our will. I was at a conference this weekend and they were talking about the mind. And I said, but if, you're, if you show up in your spirit, you don't have to worry about your mind. Imagine that God breathed himself into us and we show up in our flesh in this, this suit. We show up as a soul individual, but not a spirit person. If we show up as a spirit, we don't have to worry about our mind because our spirit man is connected to our heavenly father in dual citizenship. I'm glad he's on the inside of me and sitting on the right hand of the father. Hallelujah. Who are you? We are in an identity crisis. And how do I know that we as believers are having identity crisis because of so many churches? And because the world is in the state that, that it is in, that's how I know that the believers are having identity crisis. How dare we have so many churches in the world is in the position that it's in right now in 2023. How dare there be a Satan con? How dare they? How dare people jump off of buildings when we have a hope that lies on the inside of us? How dare we? Where are the believers? What are we doing? Why do we go to church? Why are we on here today when we can get on elevators and not say, hey, how are you? We get on elevators and we put our heads down. We go to the gas station and we don't speak. We go to church and we don't want to hug. We, where are the believers? Who are you? You are. We are having an identity crisis. The church is in an identity crisis. The believers are saved unbelievers. Where is the believers? Where are we? You went to church? We're a believer. I had on my Kojic outfit. I'm a believer. Where are the believers? We are in an identity crisis and we better take note of where we are in this season. It is not time, this is not the time for us to be in operating in ignorance. He's gotten us. And, and even some of us on here tonight, you still can't believe what the professor has taught us. Some of you are still struggling with the fact, do you trust him enough? to make the things he say, the things you say, and the things he think, the things that you think. Do you trust him enough to kill the witch? We are in an identity crisis. And if you don't hear anything else, you better check your spirit. The spirit man, the Holy Spirit is saying to your, to your spirit man, to tell your soul man to get your flesh in line because we, the Lord needs us in the earth. I'm a talker, so I'm gonna stop right there. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You still had a few more minutes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That was good. Amen. That was excellent. Excellent. All excellent. Of that notes from you. Amen. Amen. You jumped on there and you said, <laughs> you jumped on there and you said you were nervous. Yeah, and I did. You, were, you did all of this. This this, this 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 setting the stage for as if you don't do this, amen. And you got on here and blew us out the water. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Out the water. You challenged us. Hallelujah. You challenged us. Amen. So right now we're gonna open the floor. We're gonna get three individuals, volunteers, really quick to stand out to speak about something that she shared. Make it brief, but something that she shared shared so we can move to the next speaker. Three individuals, show of hands, show of hands. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Dr. Ivy Bell is one. Dr. Janet Jackson and Dr. Danisha, it says. Amen. Glory to God. And we're going to go with Dr. Mary Moore. We'll go with four. Amen. Dr. Mary Moore, Dr. Dr. Ivy Bell, Dr. Janet Jackson, Dr. Danisha, Dr. Mary Moore. Go ahead. But what got me was when she said the saved unbeliever. <clears throat> that right there. Oh, I ain't never heard that before. When she said that. It's like, okay, yeah, you, you, done did the, you done did the dipping in the water, you done prayed, you done did all that, but you still don't believe what's in the word. You done read the Bible 12 times. 
Oh my goodness, that right there, boy, I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hallelujah. That's it. That was wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. So much. Amen. 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 Dr. Janet Jackson, go ahead. Yes, what stood out to me was about the churches crisis because we have church on every corner, but look at the state of this world. Look at people jumping off of bridges or jumping off of buildings and you know, we still have the murder rate is still growing and growing and growing. So where are the believers? Where are the ones that's going to stand in the gap? Where are the believers that's going to teach the word of God so that the people will have hope? Because she said something about hope. And we have the believers lost hope in God's word. Do they take God at his word? We are in an identity crisis. Thank you, Dr. Judy. I tell you, it's a blessing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Dr. Judy. Thank you, Dr. Judy. Hey, Amen. Dr. Judy, yes, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. The word was a blessing, Dr. Judy. It was a, rare, a real blessing. Um, it stood out to me when you said to know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, have mercy upon you. So know who you are and whose you are is the answer. And it is what I got and it, what I received. And also the churches, uh, they... I heard about the church. I heard about what she was saying in the news. And about a couple of years ago, I used to work for the mayor's office here in California and they had a lady, she was an atheist. And she said she was turned into a believer because she experienced something that was life, uh, that was life changing. And she came into the office and she said, she, this was before anything hit the news. And she came and she said, have you ever heard of, um, a church being set up uh, by Satan. I said, no, you know, it, it got scary to me because I looked around, nobody else was in the office but me and her. Then I then I looked and I didn't see her. I didn't see where she came from. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. We one-on-one, -on -one. I'm one-on-one -on -one with the devil, <laughs> with, the, with the devil about to come in here. Lord, have mercy. So I'm like, where my arm at? Who is this woman? But she was coming. She came from a good place. So she was telling me, and I'm telling you in the office, I felt, this is almost like a um, deja vu here because it's like when she came into the office, she told me she was an atheist until she ended up having a life changing moment. Someone had, you know, uh, did something to her. And she said that from that day, if God pulled her through it, she would believe in Jesus Christ. And that's what, that's what ended up happening. But she did tell me what was going on in the community, but she was on her mark. For God, she was trying to stop what was going on in the community. She came in and she was wanting to meet with the mayor about them setting up a church in the community. And I never heard of such, but it was in the local newspaper, but I read the paper wrong. When I read the paper, it read something, it read something else. It, it didn't come across as Satan because I'm, of course, that's a bold word, setting up a church, a Satan, a church you know, all of that. So I didn't read it right. I read it too fast. It didn't come, but she came in and brought it to my attention the same day that the paper came out published. So this is, this is like, we, we, we ready, we ready, you know, uh, but the, the main thing, Dr. Judy, you're right. We have to know who we are in order to be ready. Amen. I thank you so much for saying that, Dr. Denisha. Dr. Mary Moore, go ahead, Apostle. God bless you. God bless you, Dr. Judy. That was awesome. And what got, as my friend, I got a friend on here. She always says, what makes my baby kick. Well, what made my baby kick was when God breathed himself into me. And when I show up, I show up as him. Hallelujah. That, I'm going to, I'm going to, you're going to hear that again, because I'm going to be using it. God ah. bless you. That was awesome. Amen. I thank you for sharing that. Amen. Before we go to our next speaker, since you brought up that uh, Satan conference, that was one year, I believe it was around 2009. I'd have to look in my, uh, I, I write down the testimonies of events and activities that have taken place. I write them all down. So uh, I'd have to look it up, but I was, I was at Benny's Car Wash. Those of you that are in Baton Rouge, you're familiar with Benny's Car Wash. And I'm at Benny's Car Wash. And at this time, I own a windshield repair business. So I'm at Benny's Car Wash and I do the windshield repairs, fix the cracks and the nicks in your, in your windshield and stuff. So um, I'm doing this and, and, I, and, and as the cars come up to get their car wash, I see the windshield and I go to them and say, hey, 
So you got some nicks in your windshield. I can fix this for a few minutes while you're vacuuming out your car. It wouldn't be any problem. I'll be able to knock this out for you. And this one guy jumped out and he had a Bible with him, a book. It looked like a Bible. So when he looked at it, he didn't look like he was a believer at all, but he had a Bible. So when I looked at him, I said, oh, man, I said, is that a Bible? He turned and looked at me and he had gothic where he was dressed in black. He had black stuff on, big piercings in his ears and tattoos and stuff that was weird. And he just turned to me and said, this is not your average Bible. I said, not my average Bible. What kind of Bible is it? Is it? He turned and showed it to me and it literally says Satan's Bible. So when I looked at it, this is what I said. When he said Satan's Bible, I said, glory to God. I said, that, are you um, are you an atheist or a, a, a Satanist? He says, I'm a Satanist. He says, I worship the Lord Satan. I said, okay, that's your Bible. He says, yeah. I said, take me to your favorite scripture. Do you call them scriptures? And, and he said, he said, yeah, we call them scriptures. I said, well, then take me to your favorite one. He took me to a scripture, and I forget the book or whatever it was, but he took me to a scripture and it said that the Lord Satan shall reign for however many years, and he shall control the earth and destroy everything. And then he and the Lord God, I mean, he and God shall have a battle, and then he shall be removed from the scene. So I said, okay, that's your favorite scripture. He says, yeah, I take him to my favorite scripture. I pull out my Bible because I always got one on me. I keep it, keep it like a little pistol, like a little... 25 Derringer or something. I keep it on me. Amen. So I pulled my Bible out and I took him to my favorite scripture in the book of Revelation that said, well, not my favorite, amen, but I took him to a scripture in the book of Revelation that said that Satan was kicked out of heaven and then the, the dragon tail took with him one third of the angels. And while I'm talking to him, I looked at him and I said this with no hesitation, with complete boldness. I said, it looked like in my book and in your book, the devil loses. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't worship a, lo a loser. That's what I told him. And I said, brother, the Lord Jesus set up this moment right now for you to give your heart to Jesus. You saw in your book and you saw it in mine that in both books, he lose. That man threw his Bible, he threw, not his Bible, his book. He threw his book in the trash can and right there by the vacuums, he lifted up his hand and gave his heart to Jesus Christ. All of his piercings, all of his star of David and satanic stars and all of that perversion and everything. He, he, he. He tattoos, he he gave his life to Jesus Christ right there at Venice Paul White on Airline Highway across from him and Air Hospital. So we cannot be afraid to act. And only the spirit man to have that kind of boldness. Only the spirit man. Thank you, Dr. Judy. That was powerful. That was powerful. Amen. Glory to God. Now you have set the stage for our next speaker, Dr. Aron Bell. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're excited to hear from you and we're ready to receive the word. It is now your floor, madam. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay, my name is Dr. Iron Bell. Uh, the title of my message was Knowing Your Identity. I believe that's the same thing that the previous lady had, and I want to add um, the order of God. First, giving honor and glory to God because he is the source of my everything. I thank God for Jesus. I thank God for order. I thank God that we have returned back to the true order of what and how he intended for us to live. I thank God for the visionary and the vision that he has given to Dr. Apostle Johnny Young and Dr. Felicia Young. I thank God for the love they have for God's people and the fact that they enjoy pouring into God's people. I always was taught if you wanna know something, then you always go back to the beginning. Um, we have been talking about this scripture since the first day of class, which is Genesis chapter one, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let us have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creepy thing that creepeth up on the earth. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And that just simply means that we were created directly by God himself to have dominion over all things of the earth. The word image and likeness simply carry the basic meaning that we are like God and we should represent God. Amen. Okay, likeness is the fact of being like another person, especially in appearance. Another word would be um, to resemble it. The fact that God himself created us just simply means that he gave us some of his attributes. Amen. So that means we have the DNA of God. You look like your daddy and you can't run from what you look like. Amen. 
Okay, for some reason, I just could not get off image of God. And the Hebrew phrase of image of God is Zalem Elohim. That's T-Z-E-L-E-M, which means shadow. So the next time you run in a, a, a jogging and you see your shadow, try to get away from it. You can't. You cannot run from your shadow. You can't run from God. You can't run from the God that lives in you. You cannot run from you. Amen. I don't care how hard you try, you can't do it. So if God gave us his attributes, that means we not only look like God, we should walk like God, talk like God. We got to love like God. We got to love like God loves. And sometimes you got to love people who don't love you back. Sometimes you have to be kind to people when they are not kind to you. Amen. The Bible speaks of three different men, spirit man, soul man, and flesh man. The spirit man that's your, uh, that has dominion. The soul man is your mind, your will, and your emotion. Flesh man is your connection to the seen realm. Spirit man was created to be like God in nature, speech, thoughts, morals, conduct, characteristics. The spirit man has been recreated and possesses the mind of Christ. The spirit man is built to mirror or reflect God in every way. Amen. The soul man's are the emotions and feelings of all kinds. The thoughts are where you store your information. And the will is a decision making ability. The soul man created to be the soul man was created to be the messenger relaying information from the spirit to the flesh. The flesh man is designed to act out the instructions of the man. So your spirit man receives from the Holy Spirit. The soul relays that information to the flesh and the flesh act out those instructions. The flesh and soul never leaves. The Holy Spirit would never speak to your flesh or your soul. Your Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit only communes with your spirit man. We are spirit that is housed in a body that possesses a soul. If we do not learn the proper order of the spirit man, soul man, and flesh man, we will function out of order. Amen. Each man has a specific design and function, and that is to be one with God, which is God's purpose for us in the earth. I heard the man of God say one Sunday morning, you can't be powerful and pitiful. You were created with purpose and nothing will satisfy you unless you fulfill your purpose. Amen. Do you trust God enough to make the things you say, the things he say, and the things you think, the things he thinks? I believe there is where identity plays the major part. Identity is very important. You have to know who you are, and you have to see yourself the way God sees you. You have to know your purpose. Identity is defined in terms of what God does to us and the relationship he creates with us and the identity he appoints for us. God made us who we are so we could make known who he is. Our identity is for the sake of making known his identity. Amen. I'm going to say that again. Our identity is for the sake of making known his identity. So if God is everywhere at the same time, if God himself created us, he's all known, he's all seen. Whew. He's everywhere at the same time. You know, when a lot of times people traveling through different parts of the world and you meet people from different cultures and people will say, how can you serve a God that you cannot see? Well, if God created me and he created you in his image and his likeness. So that means when you see me, you see God. When I see you, you see God. We are the invisible face of God. Amen. God created us in his image. That's it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You just do a mic drop like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. I need something from you, Dr. Ron. I need something from you. And I'm extremely, amen, edified by that word. But what was that subject of the message again? What was the title? I, I had two. It was knowing your identity. And it was the, the second one I put was the, order, the true order of God. Knowing your identity, the true order of God. All right, I'm writing it down. I'm taking I'm taking notes, y'all. Amen. Never get to the place, amen, glory to God. Never get to the place where you can't receive, amen, glory to God. I just love the word of God. I don't care which vessel it comes through, and this has been blessed. So we're going to go with three people really quick, amen, glory to God. We're only going to go with three this time. It look like we got to go four. All right, we're going to go four. We're going to go Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Griffin, Dr. Marshall, Dr. Tunja Scott, Dr. Jackson. 
Nino. Uh, Nino. I'm just going to say Nino. Amen. Glory to God. I, I'm going to get you to pronounce your name when you come up. Amen. Really quick, Dr. Griffin, Dr. Marshall, Dr. Scott, Dr. Jackson. Go ahead. Dr. Ronald Gibson, this is your, amen. Don't you miss that next time. I see you keep, amen. Glory to God. Don't you miss that next, we're going to automatically put your name down and say something next time. Amen. That's it's your second time trying to get up there. You're not quick with the trigger, but we got you. Go ahead, Dr. Griffin. Yeah, you got to be like Family Feud, uh, hit that trigger. But no, I was I was uh, really, really impressed with the word and how she broke it down. Uh, one thing that came to mind with me when she was talking about uh, image, um, and she talked about you look like your dad, is DNA. And, you know, one thing, you know, that we know we have in common with our ancestors and with our mother and father is the DNA. We actually are them. Now, we have our own spin on it, but we actually are them. So we actually have the DNA of the most high, of the almighty. And so that's what really like popped in my head when she said, you know, about identity and image. And we look like God. And she said something. She said, you can't be powerful and pitiful. And that is, that is, that is truly a blessing because you sure can't be. You have to, you know, you, you can't be a pit bull and a poodle. You know, you have to be one or the other. And so that's what kind of stuck out to me. So that was awesome. She did an awesome job. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Dr. Rohn, look like you need a shirt that said you can't be a pit bull or a po and a poodle. <laughs> Amen. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dr. Marshall, go ahead. Hey man, praise God. I just want to say both speakers were great. Um, Miss Flowers, I love Dr. Flowers. I love, love, love. Like I say, the, you can't be powerful and pitiful. You have to know who you are and you have to know the true order of God because everything is done decent and in order. So it was a wonderful message. It was power packed, but I love how you presented that power. It was just like as peaceful as a lamb. You know, I just like Jesus was when they was trying to crucify him. He was peaceful. He was, but it was power packed and I really, really enjoyed it. May God bless you and continue to give you more revelation and more knowledge and more everything. I truly enjoyed. And um, Dr. Uh, the one that did it before, she was great as well. All right, thanks. Glory to God. Thank you so much, Dr. Tonja Scott. Go ahead if you would. Dr. Lady E. Rome, I'm saying powerful. Yes, powerful, ma'am. You got me when you say, I'm gonna have to love some people that ain't sorry. That, that that's that's the one right there. I have to love some people that's not sorry about what they've done to me. Baby, you didn't work that thing this evening. I just gotta say that God used you. Thank you for that word and, and your shirt. I got that shirt for you. I got that shirt for you. I got that shirt. Amen. You can't be a pit bull and a poodle. Amen. Pick one. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 That's good. That's good. Amen. Dr. Jackson. Hey man, say your name for me so that I can I can I can pronounce it correctly. It's Nanachika. Nanachika. All right, yes, Nanachika. Hey man, yes. I believe this may be your first night in class. Am I correct? Yes, sir. It is. All right, Doctor Nanachika uh, Jackson. We call everyone in this class a doctor because we're believing you're going to finish this program, go to the next one, and you're going to complete. I mean, you're going to eventually end up and complete your doctorate here at HPI. So we call okay. you a doctor. So when you introduce yourself, when you speak, you just tell the class who you are. Dr. Nanachika Jackson. Now, that you only say that in class. You don't write that on no checks or nothing. No, you don't put that on no letterhead or nothing like that. Just only say it in class. Go ahead, Dr. Nanachika Jackson. Yes, sir. Awesome message. Beautiful job. But the three um, things that stood out when she made the point about understanding the functionality of the spirit, which is to receive the message, then that soul is to relay the message to that flesh, which is actually the one that acts it out here on earth, if we want to see the heaven ever demonstrated here on earth. So how she specified that and just understanding the importance of making sure we're functioning, you know, how the Holy Spirit needs to function. So I thank you for that. And also the pit bull and pitiful, I mean, powerful and pit bull, I mean, powerful and pitiful, awesome. You know, we cannot be indecisive. We're either going to be powerful or you're going to be pitiful in the situation. So awesome message. And I thank you for this space. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Hey, man, one really quick thing that stands out, um, Dr. Aron, was when you started talking DNA talk. DNA and culture are the two most powerful, influential things in the earth outside of the Holy Spirit. Those two things, amen, would transform anybody or anything, DNA. For instance, my daughter Kelsey uh, wasn't raised in the household with me. She was raised in Shreveport. And as she was raised in Shreveport, of course, 
I went down there as much as possible. Sometimes, majority of the time, it was twice a month, but sometimes three times a month, driving four hours to go and spend time with my baby girl and everything. But as she got older, I realized that my baby girl has um, certain appetites that, I mean, she act like me, she think like me, she function like me, and she has the same appetite. Her favorite food is spaghetti. Uh, is spaghetti. My favorite food is spaghetti. My granddaughter's favorite food is spaghetti. She didn't have to grow up in the household with me to receive my appetite. DNA passed that on to her. And I'm trying to tell you today that God has given us his DNA and we only want what he wants. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We got a taste for what he likes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why we'll grieve. That's why we'll grieve when we don't act right. When we don't act right, we don't feel good. You remember the time you used to be able to used to be able to cut somebody out and go home and watch the news to see if you own it? Amen. Glory to God. Now you can't even talk crazy to somebody without you feeling bad. And now you got to go apologize. I'm sorry that I looked at you like that or I said that or I did that. Amen. Glory to God. That's because you only desire by appetite what he wants. Your flesh might try to drag you into something else. But your spirit, man, only wants what God wants, and that DNA is because of it. I thank you for sharing that, Dr. Rome. I have, amen, glory to God, the whole bottom side of this page and the next page filled out with notes from you. I thank you so much. Amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. And I, 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 didn't, I didn't pick you for this reason. Amen, glory to God. But I'm proud to say that I'm your apostle and your pastor. Amen. Great word. Great word. Hallelujah. Amen. Dr. Freddie Roberts Jr., you are up to bat, and these ladies have made it hard. My daddy told me a long time ago that any good preacher will make another preacher either want to preach or sit down. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, it's your turn, Freddie. We're going to see which one you pick. Amen. All right. Glory to God. Um, first of all, let me pray. Um, Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity. I pray, Lord, that the words of my mouth, um, meditation of my heart be accepted unto you. Father God, let whatever it is that you speak through me, Lord, come through, Lord, um, as you need it to. If you think, amen. All right. All right. Well, I'm a little nervous too, but you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna let God use me since um the two daughters before me, you know, did a flawless job. Um the title I have, um, I was honestly um in sync with the identity crisis, but as they were speaking, um, you know, as some of you may have experience, you know, the Holy Spirit kind of just like okay, gathers everything together and it just gives you like that subject. So um, he gave me sick and tired of being sick and tired of the identity crisis. Sick and tired of being sick and tired of the identity crisis. And as they were speaking, you know, they were saying a lot about, you know, not knowing who you are and got to know who you are and understand who God created you to be. So um, I was going to go through the same scripture they did as well. Um, and then the Holy Spirit brought me to a certain passage in Genesis 3 um, when it talks about the serpent coming to Eve and getting uh, basically tricking her to um, try to eat the fruit of the tree. And um, um, the third chapter, third verse, um, it says, Eve says, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat or of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, but God does know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be, a, a, be as God, knowing God, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree and the, and the and tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Um, now I want to go back to the beginning, which is Genesis 1 and um, 26, and they read it already. Um, and it says, and God said, let us make man into our own image, our likeness, and let him don't let him have dominion over the fish in the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So I think in chapter three, somebody lost their identity that quick because didn't the Holy Spirit just say that I gave you dominion over every creeping thing? So how did you have something that was creeping come up in your life? and take dominion over you 
and let you lose sight of what God said. And I said to myself, I said, dang, that's crazy because so many times in our life, God will tell us something and we will go up for prayer in church and hear the word from the man of God or the apostle or whoever it is. Then we leave out of the church and we forget what God said. We start going back into that thing that we want to get delivered over because we think that that's just the way it is. Or we don't even know because we're so easily persuaded to go back into something because something looks so hard. But then we forget our identity because of the fact that we can't see already what God has shown us or what we believe God has done for us already. So we fall back into it. And at some point, we just got to be sick and tired of doing that. We got to be at a position in our life where we say, God, you've given me dominion. So anything that don't sound like you, anything that don't think like you, I'm not going to move like it. That's the way I believe it to be. So then God took me to James 1 24. And it says, um, for he behold himself and goeth his way and straight away forget, forgetteth what, man, what manner of man he was. That sounds like Adam because Adam should have stood there and said, hold on, no, 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 no. We're not going to eat this fruit because God gave us dominion over this thing that's trying to take dominion over us. Why do we let things take dominion over us when God's given us the actual black and white that I have given you? Uh, he says, he says, says, I give you dominion over the fishes of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So why do we allow things that God is allowed to be scared of us? We're scared of it. Because we don't know who we are. If we believe God says we are the head and not the tail above and not beneath, that we are lenders in our bars, why are we the ones going to asking people for stuff? Why are we the ones going to ask for prayer and asking for deliverance? I believe that God said, if, if you believe the identity that I gave you, that you know that you're the lender. So you don't need to go ask for peace because I already given you peace. You go lend out peace to whoever needs peace. You go lend out that love to whoever needs love. You go lend out that faith to whoever needs that faith. Why are we out here asking for prayer for things in our body healed? And God said, I've given you the, the ability. You're, 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 you, now that you know your identity, you have the, you, you're supposed to actually just be the example. You're supposed to be the example. Why are we going up to the pulpit every Sunday asking for prayer for the same thing over and over again? Why haven't we activated the power that God has given us? Oh, because we activate in our soul, man, so we feel like God didn't do it because we messed up yesterday. We, we, we act in our flesh, man, and we say, man, because I did this, I ain't going to church. I ain't doing it no more. God don't love me. But if we're supposed to activate in our spirit, man, we know that we're more than a conqueror. And that a man falls seven times, but he get back up again, which means I'm going to continue to speak those things that are not as though they are into my life over and over and over and over again until it becomes relevant and because until it becomes, uh, 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 as Apostle says, uh, um, visible on the earth, until it becomes visible on the earth. There was a scripture that I read today and God gave me revelation and it was awesome. I'm, don't think, I think I got it on my tablet here. It was... Uh, It was Mark 16, 17 to 18th verse. And it talks about the miracles of signs. And it says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongue. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I believe so many people don't get the opportunity to see the miracles that follow them because they're too busy walking backwards. They're too busy walking backwards. Because we act like we, we supposed to see things, right? You speak something in the realm and you believe that it's going to come to pass. But so many times we take steps back, looking at our past, looking at things we've never done, messing up. Oh, I'll never get over this situation. Oh, I'll never get this healing in my body. Oh, this person will never, uh, 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 I'll never be able to find a husband. I'll find a wife. We speak all these things and God says, miracle signs and wonders follow you. But the problem is you got to keep walking and talking. See, I look at it like this. If you actually speak it and you stay focused on it and you stay in your spirit, man, and you stay focused in it, 
then all of a sudden you'll find yourself walking in a circle. So many times we try to look back for the miracle because it was in the past, but it wasn't in the past. God said, I have something exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask for you, but you have to be that example. You have to know your identity, know that you decreed something already. Same thing Jesus did with Lazarus. He decreed it, but he didn't have to go yet. It was still there. And when he got there, it manifested and Lazarus rose from the dead. So if we believe something, if we decree something, if we know that we are God kind and we and we and we and we are made of God, and if God spoke something and it was so, then we speak something, it is so. Why are we going backwards? Because we don't know who we are in that moment. Why are we going back to that man? Why are we going back to that woman? Why are we going back to that job? If God told you to leave that job because he has something better for you, you ought to just keep walking and believing God in that thing until it shows itself up. And at the end of the day, you'll find yourself walking in circles because what follows you, you'll find yourself right in front of it if you keep walking and if you keep having faith. But the problem is we'll be like the children of uh, 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 um, Israel. And even though there was something that God showed us, because we don't have faith, because we complain, because we want to keep going back to Egypt, then we'll find ourselves wandering around forever saying, man, why God never blessed me? Man, God, why my healing in my body ain't never happened? God says, because you're too busy worrying about what was, because you forgot of who you was, and then I'm telling you where I'm taking you, and you forgot where I'm taking you, and if you just kept walking and believing the word that I've spoken, and the believing the word that you believe that was spoken to you, then you'll find yourself running right on to what I promised you. So we got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired of the identity crisis. We got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired of everything that tried to hold us back and know that I will look forward to the hill, which is where my help comes from. I'm not looking back. I'm not caring about what's going on in my past. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what my bank account looks like. I don't care what, what, what Susie and Jacob said about me. But if God said it, I'm going to believe it. And not only that, I'm going to say it too. I'm going to repeat what he said. Because I decreed it. We said it. They said it. I'm going to say it again. Do you trust God enough to make the things he say the things you say and the things he think the things you think? So, God, I believe that everything you said about me is true. So I'm going to believe that thing and I'm going to keep walking until it shows it, it shows itself up because God is waiting on you to activate your faith. God is waiting on you to show up. And how do you show up? You tell that serpent when it chumps to tell you that, nah, you know, you want this here. You want that there. You have to distinguish the spirit and your feelings. Yes, in your moment, your feelings want it. But you have to say, God, is this you? I want to operate by the spirit. I want to walk into a door that I know is going to be products of the kingdom. Because my favorite quote, I said it a while back. It says, I'm not, I'm not from the dust, but I am a spirit being created by God himself, planted into the earth to produce kingdom fruit. I'm not worried about producing anything but kingdom fruit. So I have to understand that God, we, we're, we're beings, right? We, we read it in, in Genesis when he said God blew into the dust, right? He blew into the, he said, I create, let's make man into our own image. So God created you out of himself. And once he made you out of himself, he said, okay, I got to put it in something. And he planted it into something that was potent and something that was going to be able to produce something. And the moment you came out of the ground, God said, now I can throw you into the earth, but you need to do one thing. Don't go back and lose your identity. Don't let the serpent come and take you out of what I told you, but take the seed that I put in you because you're the ultimate seed and go out and make fruit from the kingdom. If it don't look like the kingdom, then it ain't the kingdom. If the serpent didn't look like God, then it ain't God. Then I ain't going to listen to you telling me to grab the fruit. I'm not going to listen to nothing you say because you don't sound like God. You don't look like God. I know what God looked like because I'm God. I'm like God. He created me. He blew into me. Everything in me is the Holy Spirit, and you don't feel like the Holy Spirit. So I'm not going to let you persuade me to do this and do that. I'm going to run like Joseph because I'm not going to be persuaded and lose my blessing because you think you you sound good, but it don't it, ain't, it don't sound kingdom. It sounds good, but it don't sound kingdom. And because I'm to operate like the kingdom, I'm going to move like the kingdom. I'm going to walk like the ting, kingdom. I'm going to talk like the kingdom. So I decree that I am willing to be able to. I, I'm not willing. I I I decree over my own life and over so many people lives in here that we will walk not in identity crisis, but we will walk in a, in a in a model of knowing that we're just sick and tired of the enemy coming in and pushing us away from our destiny, that 
while we're taking this class, that it's not to let us go backwards and forget our identity, but it's to us to go out and bear those fruit, be the fruit that God created us to be and heal the sick and heal the blind. And that's all I got, y'all. Uh, Freddie, Freddie, Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> that was excellent. <laughs> Freddie, Freddie, Freddie. You heard Mama Lois. It was excellent. Great word. Good job, good word. Job, All good right. Job. We got hands that went up. Y'all know how it go now. All right. So, Dr. Ronald Gibson, we're going we gonna, to, by, 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 you missed it again, but we're going to go with you this time. We're going to go <laughs> with you first. And we're going to go with Dr. Williams, Dr. Daniels, Dr. Stubb, and Dr. Fortune. That's how we're going to close out. And I need you guys to be quick uh, because I don't want to take you much over the time. And we do have another class coming behind us. So Dr. Ronald Gibson, Dr. Williams, Dr. Daniels, Dr. Stubbs, Dr. Fortune. Go ahead. Hey, man, I appreciate you, sir, for finally calling on me, brother. And I just want, I'm going to be quick. I want to say about all three speakers, man, y'all was so awesome. Like, y'all had me on fire sitting in this seat today. I'm going to tell y'all, both of you women, Starting off with the first one, when she talked about these unbelievers, we, we're believers, but we're living like unbelievers because we, we're scared to stand on what God has given us. He's given us the power and the victory in all that we do, amen? He tell us to go out of monster dog and illuminate like the light, amen? That second sister, you were so laid back in the way you dealt with that identity and you broke it down. I'm going to tell you like this here. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm connected to my daddy, the, the, the heaven kingdom, amen? I thank God that he is my father and the brother. Hey, you stood up, man. I know Dr. Young put that pressure on you, but you come back, you lay back. I seen you with your eyes locked in, dealing with that title, sick and tired, yeah. sick and tired. All we got to do is let them know. You ain't got to be sick and tired, sick and tired, because it clearly shows us in the Bible that we can't straddle the pen. He said, you got to pick a child a side. You got the choice to choose the side that you pick. What side are they going to pick? Man, great job from all three speakers in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Glory to God. Thank you, Dr. Gibson. Amen. Seems like it was better that we waited. Amen. Glory to God. Waited for you because you gave us a conclusion of that thing. We thank you. Dr. Williams, your turn. Yeah, they, they were all in sync. It was, I mean... You know, you know, it was nothing but the Holy Spirit when they all had the same, same subject and it, it came together so well. It did. It started off with Dr. Judy, you know, and us not knowing who we are and why we don't act the way we should, because we're not following in, in our father. That shadow thing, you know, I, we always talk about how powerful our father is and he owns a cattle on a thousand and hills he's this and he's that but he made us in his image we are his shadow so so we so those signs shall follow us you know that you know that got me the first time it was said that the, we don't follow the signs but the signs follow us and brother you brought it on you you ended it well with all of them it, it's just amazing how awesome god do, does things when he does it he brings us all together in line with one another amen amen thank you so much dr williams dr daniels and then dr Stubbs and dr fortune Okay. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to um, prolong it, but just to follow up with the other two, all three messages were in sync. I praise and thank God for what was said tonight. This is what I got out of all three with uh, Freddie bringing up the rear. God is reminding us to take our place, stand firm, activate the power. He's given us a choice to either be a pit bull or a poodle. And that's all I got to say. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I love it. I love it. Amen. Dr. Stubbs and Dr. Fortune. I definitely have to say um, all awesome teachings. But Dr. Roberts, when I heard that sick and tired of being sick and tired of identity crisis, we all had came to a point where we were sick and tired of living the way that we knew best, but knowing there was a better way with God. And just with the demonstration you told us what happened with the Satanists, that was a moment all along when he was sick and tired of sick and tired of living in darkness, living a lie until he was exposed with the truth to where he had to make a decision on the spot to where he was sick and tired of being sick and tired to where he made the right decision 
to the walk in truth. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Dr. Stubbs. Amen. Glory to God. That's good stuff. Dr. Fortune, go ahead. Um, I just want to say uh, to all of our classmates, you guys did a phenomenal job. The message I received this evening was fantastic, like just phenomenal. And I, I just want to say it brought back um, Dr. Young, your your quote that you say to us all the time, do you trust God enough? Like that, that was the whole thing that just kept resonating and repeating to me throughout all of you guys' message. And Dr. Freddie, when you changed your title abruptly like that, the Holy I knew it was the Holy Spirit. It made sense. It clicked. It just clicked right then. And I wanted to say to you that this class, and I just want to say to you, Dr. Young, that this class, it has literally changed the trajectory of my life. Um, this phase that God has me, and I know that I'm 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 where I'm supposed to be at this exact moment in my life, to the point that last week, and I ain't ashamed to say, I'm getting married on August the seventh. I told my fiance last week. I came home and I told him, I said, "Listen, I know there's things that you're still struggling with, and I'm still praying for you with those things, but I've been praying down in our home." And there's some things I've been praying out and you're bringing those things back into our home. And before that, we can commit to God together on August the 7th. I can't do that because I'm we're a spirit first and you're allowing your flesh man to rule you. And I don't want you to get that wrong. I don't want you to get that wrong. And I said, I'm going to cover you in prayer. But I want you to know that I love you enough that I want to do this. I want to operate in the right way. And if we can't operate in the right way, I'm willing to let you go because I trust God enough. I trust God enough. Even if it hurts me, I trust God enough. And he came to me Sunday and he said, I trust God enough too. And I'm willing to make, correct my wrongs. and. We're, we're trying to correct this thing. Glory to God. And I praise God for you, Dr. Young. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Well, I'm going to say this about your fiance. Uh, th there's a lot more that I can say, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to limit it. This is what I'm going to say about your fiance. He can't do it. He can't do it. He can't correct his wrong. Amen. Glory to God. Because if he could, if all of us can attest to say that if we could have, if we could have stopped whatever we were doing, we'd have stopped a long time ago. Amen. But the word of God says this. How shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed to the word of God? Hallelujah. The word of God has the ability to sever us, to cut us away from any behavior, any activity, any identity or anything else. So I want to tell you and your fiance. Amen. If you're going to line up with God and do it right, then do it right and get it a church. Amen. Glory to God. That's teaching the word of God. The same way you stood there. And I don't know where you go. I don't even know where you live. I don't know what city. But I noticed the same way you took that stance and said, no, nope, we're not going to live like this. We're going to do this the right way and we're going to walk the right way with this. The same way you did in your relationship, do it also in your, in your feeding of the spirit man. Yeah, I said it in front of everybody. If you are not being taught the word of God to be fed, find somewhere that's teaching you the word of God. But that's more important than anything. Find somewhere that's teaching you the word of God. Just don't be there because grandmama went there and mama went there and it's a family church. Amen. Find somewhere where your spirit is being built up because there's nothing else that can cleanse us of fleshly behavior and cut us away from fleshly identity but the word of God. Which brings me to what uh, Freddie said in my closeout of this. That brings me to this, that we will act like whoever we listen to. Amen. Whoever we give our ear to, that's who we're going to act like. God said in Genesis 1 that you were created in my image and likeness. And Freddie said two chapters later, they're quick. They messed around and they, 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 they forgot who they were. That's because they sat there and listened to the devil. Amen. Whoever you give your ear to, that's what you're going to act like. And this brings me to a quote that I always say. I actually have it on the wall right there. I wrote it down again in my notebook. It says, any estimation of yourself that does not factor in the blood of Jesus or the power of the Holy Spirit is a devilish miscalculation. That's what it is. Anytime you come with an estimation of yourself and you haven't factored in what Jesus did and who the Holy Spirit is has now made you, amen, you, you got a devilish miscalculation. Let me show you. For instance, 
the enemy, you will have a calculator in your mind. And every time it comes time for us to do something for God, the enemy wants to tell us what to put on a calculator. So he'll say, I want you to factor in that you are a single mother. I want you to factor in your last marriage didn't work. I want you to factor in that one of your children went to jail. I want you to factor in you used to be on drugs. I want you to factor in you went to jail. Add all that up and now look at the number and see if you can do it now. Amen. But, but watch this. You can't afford to give the enemy access to the calculator. Because when he tell you to factor in all of that, you can't stop. The Holy Ghost going to say, but I also want you to factor in that the blood of Jesus went to work on your behalf and made you new. I want you to factor in that I put you back where Adam fell from. I want you to factor in that the Holy Spirit, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want you to see if you give God access to the calculator, he will begin to tell you what to add up. And that's what we have to do. We don't want a devilish miscalculation. Every time you say, I can't do something, you've miscalculated. You've given the wrong person to calculate. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And last but not least, Freddie, you said this. After we learn these truths, we cannot afford to go backwards. And I want to tell everybody in this class today, this is not the end of this journey. This may be the end of this course. But this journey God is taking you on. And, and Dr. Jessica, you said it. You said it, the phase that I'm in. I'm going to rephrase that. You are no longer in a phase. You are now in a lifestyle. This is the way things are from now on. Hallelujah. From now on, you ain't got to unmute. Just go ahead and tell yourself, from now on, this is the way I see myself. Amen. This is the way I act. This is the way I think. Sever ties with former thoughts that didn't line up with the word of God. Any thought you had before this class started, that the word of God has shown you in scripture that they were a misconception. Cut ties with it. You don't know, you don't owe any allegiance to it. You don't owe any loyalty to it. I don't care who that who the thoughts came from. Sever ties with them because they're working against your purpose. This has been good tonight. What an amazing chapel service, everybody. I think we finally got the recording issues fixed with uh uh, with our, our Zoom. So we, we if we do, well, don't worry, I'm going to send this link out to everybody so that you can review chapel. Amen. If we do have it fixed, I'm going to send it out so you can watch it again. Amen. Glory to God. And with that being said, we're going to now bring in Dr. Kelsey Favors. If this is your first night, like Dr. Jackson, or if you don't know, she's going to show you how to use your Canvas student portal, how to pay tuition, how, how to go back and review classes that you missed, how to turn in homework, and how to take your exam. And for some of you, you did not take your exam before 6 o'clock tonight. And this is mercy speaking and grace speaking right now. So we're going to leave the exam open until Wednesday. We're going to leave it open until Wednesday to help you out. We will not be doing this in the next course. This is only because it's a new program. Amen. So we're going to leave it open until Wednesday. After Wednesday, you will not have access to the exam. All right, Dr. Favors, if you would, go ahead. Good evening. So I'm going to share my screen. So, of course, if you're new to Canvas, new to HBI, new to the course, this is where you'll go to get your workbook, everything, your textbook, everything is going to kind of be right here for you. You'll get to know everybody, who we are. Um, also, there is the link for tuition as well that you can click and you can pay it. The link for Zoom is there as well. If you want to know your class schedule, what days you don't have class, that is on here as well. And you can always click these links to submit homework. And your exam is right here as well. Also remember to do your course review. Um, you just have to state what you got out of the course and respond to two students. And if for any reason you have any Canvas questions, I'm going to put in the chat the Canvas email. Make sure you send me an email so I can help you out and get you situated. Dr. Favors, I stepped away for a quick second. We did discuss how to take the exam, correct? Yes. All right. Great. Amen. Thank you all so much for an amazing class. Thank you, Dr. K. Amen. Glory to God. And bless you, everyone. Amen. Glory to God for an amazing class tonight. This has been phenomenal. 
If you have any more questions, be sure to call us at the office Tuesday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. I know that we will be open tomorrow. I will personally be there myself as well, Tuesday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Amen. Tomorrow. Amen. God bless you all. Let's pray out. Father, I thank you now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for the speakers tonight. I thank you for the anointing that was poured out for them, Lord God sharing such rich revelation, Lord God. Now, Lord God, fill them up with fresh revelation, Lord God. Fill them up once again with the anointing. As they are poured out, cause them to receive again, that they cup may run over, Lord God. And we all now come together with one mind and one as one voice, Lord God, as the body of Christ, Lord God, operating, Lord God, as your extension in the earth, Lord God, everything that you need to get done. We are saying, Lord God, that you, we know you want to utilize your body. We are available. We are your vessels. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night.